you went to Bowling Green, I went to Michigan, so it's a huge inferiority complex. His, yeah, he has yeah. A huge. I mean, it's tough. You know, when you finish, when you're losing to Michigan all the time, he's gonna have that chip on his shoulder. Well, you know, maybe one day we'll be teammates, but uh, Montreal is six inches too tall to be signed right now. <laughs> That was two summers ago. Mike Camilleri and Kevin Bieksa. Camilleri declared the winner, so Bieksa said, I'm bringing some help next time. Good to see you, Mike. Good to see you. Your Mike. voice a little hoarse? It's a little hoarse, yeah. Sorry but that. but you, you, uh, that maybe will make it an even matchup with Kevin, right? Because uh, you dominated him last time, didn't you? Hey, whoa, whoa. hey Kevin Bieksa, great to see you, man. Hey, First hey, of all, congratulations too, on a great year. You proved yourself in the playoffs to be the kind of defenseman everybody wants. Now that I've complimented you, what were you going to say? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you brought a couple of guys with you, right? Yeah, yeah. Why don't you introduce timers. him? Who's okay. that over there? This guy? Yeah. Uh, Victor Oreskovic, uh, great power forward, uh, big chest on him. Great <laughs> shape. Say, that's big say. chest on big him. Ch yeah. uh, <laughs> great shape. Great when, shape. When, when the guy named Juice says you got a big chest, that's a good thing, right? It means a lot. And the guy beside you is Chris Tanev, who uh, welcome to the show for the first time. Tell Pleasure me about the kid. The kid might need an extra microphone to, to hear him, but uh, good oh, young so guy. he's saying you talk softly. Prove him wrong. Yell at him right now. No, don't. Uh, I'm not going to yell at yell him. Yell at him. I got to pick on Camilleri. Though. Okay, so <laughs> yell at Mike in a second. So we talk about concussions all the time on the show, which is kind of interesting because we. Me, the show, the media do not play. It's not our heads, it's not our futures, it's yours, as in you four. Has the media, do you think, focused too much on concussions and m m talked too much about, you know, quote unquote, making the game safer? For me, not on this topic. Uh, I think the media does tend to blow a lot of things up, but um, to me, concussions are that important, and, uh, and there's some definite changes in the landscape that, that uh, I, I like the fact that the media is keeping it on the front of everybody's. The thing is, there's so much more exposure on, on concussions now. Are there more now than there were in the, in the game 20 years ago? You know, maybe. Probably. Maybe, but... Uh, Do you know how much faster you would skate than a guy 20 years ago? Do you know how much bigger you are? Do you know how much t stronger your equipment is than the guy 20 so, years so ago? So to me, that's Good the big point. difference. Like, like <laughs> <laughs> so, so to me, that's the big difference. People all argue and say, well, um, you got to, you know, you talk play the game with your head up and responsibility should be more on the puck carrier and things of that nature. And that's fine, but in today's game, Things happen so fast that players with high hockey IQ are still susceptible to this type. But of you're one of those guys he referred to you as a power forward. I mean, you got to play a certain style of game, right? right? No, I think there's that emphasis on being physical, and to keep my job in the National Hockey League, that's something I have to do. And obviously, I'm never trying to hurt someone, but a lot of the times you're skating quick, and, and guys train hard, so um, it happens. Injuries happen. Yeah, but guys definitely are bigger. They're they're faster. The equipment's bigger, but um, it comes down to the players. I think we got be responsible for each other out on the ice. So, so th and that's interesting that you made that comment. So far, best karma to, to the kid. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Mark Savard still obviously is suffering terribly, and he basically said, you know what, don't wait for the league to do it. We should, as players, have more respect for others and understand the ramifications of what we're doing. Do you agree with that? I, I think there should be more emphasis on the hitter, uh, and there is a response. But there's a difference. When you, you know when you're hitting a guy, like when you're playing, I say the best example is when you're playing against a buddy of yours, you play him as hard as you possibly can, and you hit him as hard as you can, but you're never hurting him. And there's a respect factor there. Oh, I like that's a really good example. You're not, you're not going to try and kill your best friend, but you're, you're not going to want to lose to him either. Kevin, you trying to kill your best friend? Well, sometimes, but <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter, I think, what rules you instill. It's, it's going to come down to, like you said, the hitter uh, making the, the choice whether or not he wants to kill the guy when he's vulnerable or if he wants to maybe let up a bit. And what should the attitude the be, though? I mean, th this is really what it comes down to is how you see the game. Like, wh when you have a player in your sights and you know that he's vulnerable, but you know you can make a legal hit, Vic, what are you supposed to do? Are you supposed to bury him or back off a bit? For me, I know if I come to the bench after laying a big hit, the guys on the team love it, the coaches are happy with it. And I, like I said, you don't want to hurt anyone, but sometimes that happens. Depends who it is, though, too. Like, if I got a chance to maybe line this guy up like, <laughs> and put him through the boards, you know, it's, it's probably a great opportunity. But, you know, maybe if it's somebody Might get else, the elbow uh, in the chin, though. Or let maybe, me ask uh, you a question. I, I wanna, <laughs> I, I, what'd you think of the, the, the Torres hit on Seabrook? I mean, I, I know you're talking about your own guy, so maybe, well, maybe I should ask you. Do you think, do you think that hit there was one that should be out of the game, or is that just part of the game? Oh, man. I, First know, of all, that's, hold play, on. that's playoff hockey. Though. Right. I'm asking like just, Mike, uh, though, right? Yeah, because Mike said moments hockey. before the show went on the air, said, I always speak my <laughs> mind. I always speak the no, truth. I said to you. Okay, I said answer. You. I speak the truth. I don't always tell you what I'm thinking. Um, I was in a competition committee earlier in the summer meeting, and we probably watched that hit 40 times. I don't remember what I said, so I'm not going to repeat myself now. Oh. Yeah. What kind of answer is that? Yeah, really. <laughs> well, okay, let's talk about his, his lack of answer. 
Yeah, well, I can't understand what he's saying, first of all, when, <laughs> when he speaks right now. But for, yeah. for that, that hit, um, that's playoff hockey again. So maybe Rules change in playoffs? Clearly. Clearly, well, don't I, they? I think on that hit, Rafi's coming in. He's moving quickly. He's, you know, obviously Seabrook's coming behind the net, but Rafi doesn't get his elbow up or anything. He's hitting him with his shoulder, and back 10, 15 years ago, that's a clean hit. There's no debate. All right, we got to go to Wendell Clark right sir. there. Uh, Wendell Clark on Bruce Bell, was it? Mm -hmm. oh. Legendary. So, the chirp obviously is part of this show. I'm not done with you, Camilleri. And of course, it's part of hockey, and at the PA golf tournament, part of driving range etiquette. Take a look. I'm going to take it easy because you can hear me, but if I was playing against him and uh, it was for money, I'd probably chirp those shorts and uh, ask him if his uh, sister didn't need him today. Okay. The shorts is, shorts, looks, is, uh, shorts is because they're a little short. Yeah, it looks like his mom threw him in the dryer on high heat. <laughs> uh, 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 you take the golf seriously, too, right? And you take your golf wardrobe seriously. Uh, you know, I, I, like, I like it. I got all the Adidas golf gear looking good, looking sharp. You had to but, mention a sponsor. Little what are you saying, Pietro? Oh, you got steel right there, too. I got it all going. But, yeah, no, but hey, listen, you're wearing a burgundy sweater today, Mike. So. <laughs> hey, you got a problem with that? What you about got a problem with my sweater? What about I'm going to Chris. Boots. We'll do that in a second, more. Is it not summer? I mean, you gotta, I mean, can we get a shot of the suede? Up next, more payback. Remember this about my shirt? It's good to wash my car with. Really? Well, after four years at Bowling Green, it's nice to see that you become a leader in the dressing room. How many people have read uh, Cat in the House? And for those who can't read? Not in the dark, not in the tree, not in the car, let me be. I do not like them in a box. That's terrible. Some feeling, please? I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam. Uh, still terrible. Hey, kid, does he sound half dead? What a fabulous diver he is. This is just an absolute joke. Oh, it's the stick. Boom. Not much. Heads are going back like they're getting shot with a with a gun. Kelly bangs into Hamlet, who goes down on his face. The rebound scores! He dove one time too many! Excellent dive. He makes that very easily. So I'm thinking a ballsy move on our part to essentially say that the Habs and the Canucks are two teams where diving is an issue. Is that fair? Not at all. That's not fair? Well. Oh, hold, hold on. Let me remember you being quoted during the playoffs saying guys shouldn't be diving, pointing the finger at your own guy saying, no, hey, no, let's... no, no, no. That got taken out of context. I, really? I never pointed the finger. You didn't mention anyone's name. <laughs> well, you I, said at anybody on our team. I said in general, People well, we shouldn't know be what you were talking about. I thought it was great. Diving. You know, that, that's hard. You, you put a couple uh, highlights like that on there. I can't uh, deny those, but I, I'm definitely a guy that believes in not embellishing. No diving. Get it out of the game. Uh, for a while, we had, like, the try and embarrass guys and post names. And right. We're talking about doing that kind of stuff again, just really severely penalizing it. So you uh, on the competition committee. So you remember that discussion? Yeah. Because you didn't remember apparently <laughs> the discussion of the team. Memory. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. So so you're saying that you, that you guys are looking to make a move to to deal with diving? Yeah, it's not good. We don't we don't like it. I mean, you know, most of us are brought up taught that unless you if you can get up, you get up. And, you know, you don't stand. Well, we don't want this yeah. to turn no. into another sport. We all know what sport. Hey, I is. loved what you said. And and you, when I said you pointed the <laughs> finger, I, I thought it was at your whole room saying we as a team and the team we're playing against gotta gotta you know look at this more from the uh, standpoint of integrity than illegality. Yeah, well, we don't believe it as a team in, in embellishing, and uh, you know we're we're gonna get better at it. I think the unfortunate part is a lot of times diving it gets rewarded, and I think it makes the officials' lives difficult, but. Uh, having said that, there's, there's not a, a place in the game for it, but... The other side is you're embarrassing a ref, right? Right. So you and might he'll not want to do that because he's probably gonna, not going to protect you when you need it. Right, and I, I don't think there's any question that you guys got hurt by that. I mean, you're not going to comment because you're, you're talking about officiating right now, but I think that you really didn't get the benefit of a lot of calls when you really needed the benefit of a lot of calls, maybe because of bad blood that, that sticks you get, around. You get labeled for sure by the referees, and I think the guys... I don't know. I'm not making excuses from the guys that are doing or thinking I'm going to do whatever it takes to help my team win. If I have to sell a call to get us a power play to win the game, but then at the same time you're looking at that versus the integrity of the game. So it's a, it's a fine line. Baseball has its own unwritten rules and a code where uh, things are are understood. Take a look at this. Seven seven. Top of the seventh inning. Takashi Sato hits Albert Pujols. Bottom of the seventh. We go after Pujols gets drilled high and in the hand. And first a brush back, and then Jason Mott gets drilled, or Jason Mott drills him. Uh, the player was Ryan. Uh, what, what, what do you think of that? Do you understand why? Do you understand the whole idea of payback? Uh, you know, it shows some gamesmanship in baseball. It shows um, 
I guess that's really only the situation that, and maybe where a guy hits a catcher, where there's a dangerous physical element to it, and they're gonna they're gonna have their own code and stick up for each other. It's kind of cool. Yeah, but def when Pujols gets hit, he just broke his hand a couple months ago. He's your best player. You got you go right after the other team's best player. Two things I like about that. First of all. When Ma right. says, I just hit you, what are you going to do about it? And then second thing is, the guy that's getting hit, because you say there's this code where we being your guy, you're going to be in our guy. Why is that second guy just taking it? Why is he just going to step up there and get hit? You charge the mound once in your career, pitchers are going to think twice about beating you. Right, I think that Ryan Keep is looking at Mott and thinking that Mott's yeah. a lot bigger than me. So uh, before we go to break, we got to roll Jared Weaver uh, because you're talking about the stare down. Take a look at the stare down here that really got Jared Weaver mad enough that he threw at a guy's head and got suspended. There's the, the hit and... It's the turn of the body, too. Would you have drilled the next guy? I, I like what the guy did. He made the hit. I, don't, I wasn't even thinking on the other side. Right? <laughs> oh, oh, so you, you, li you, you like the hitter rather than the pitcher right, on that? Right. What would you have done to him? Would we be talking about baseball if things like this didn't even happen, though? Right. So I think it's great for the game to show a little well, passion. What do you it's... think of the show-up thing? Do, are you one of those guys that believes that hockey players has to, have to act in a certain way? Because clearly that was, you know, the Ovechkin, you know, the, the, the sort of, uh, you know, celebrating the hot, hot, hot thing. Um, I don't know. How do you feel about it? Well, that? hockey's a passionate game. There, there's fighting. There's hitting. There, it's fast. Baseball, you know, at, at the argument at times is it's, it's dull and it's boring. You see things like that. We're talking about it on this great show right now. <laughs> you know, it, get, it brings exposure oh, you. The, the word the great game. gets thrown around very loosely these days. But um, <laughs> You know what? what? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, it's honestly, I, I like it. Ready for it? Take off the mask. Will no. you take it off for me? Z-Roy <laughs> Simon! <laughs> oh, Canada! And you whip it. There you go. And the key there is his cell phone. He actually stepped on it. Oh, my God. Now, you've all seen the green suit. But can you, do you know what it's like to be in the green suit? You can't see anything. Like, I don't know how those guys do it. Dedicated professionals. But, but I don't know how you, I don't even know how you know if your team scored or not or who's in the penalty box, really. Like, you can't see anything four feet in front of you. Those guys are great, though. You love those guys? Oh, I love them. I think they're so creative. You guys love those guys? With. Absolutely. Very, you very you love those guys? I think they're cool, too. I thought you could see, I would imagine you could see. Five feet in front of wow. you, that's it. Cool. No. So. Let's talk football. All football fans here I know. Randy Moss retired. Whether he remains that way, who knows? I would love to ask you for what you think of all kinds of guys in the NHL who play a certain way, but you'll never answer that question. So let's talk Moss. He's likely the second greatest receiver in history. Do you care about his behavior? I think he's great. I think it, some of the stuff he does is entertaining. It provides color to the sport, and I know he's had some trouble, but... Yeah, no, I agree with you. He's, he's unbelievable. He's... He's got a little bit of personality, but um, he, uh, if you're, he's a great player. If you're talking like um, Hall of Fame stuff and all that, to me, it's, it's what he did on the playing field. And um, no doubt, his number speaks for himself, the way he played the game. Um, love it. Yeah, yeah I can't. I'd love to argue with this. You wanted to argue with him specifically. I'm, I'm really so, you know what? Why don't we skip to Randy Moss and why don't you just, why don't you just take a free shot at him? Oh, Take geez. a free shot. Yeah, Have Mike Camilleri. Yeah, have an There's supposed to be topics on this show. <laughs> what? Well, What's yeah, more entertaining? No, I'd love to take a shot at him, but I just keep looking this way and seeing that desert boot in the side, <laughs> side view. The what desert and the pant keeps going higher. Oh, you're insulting me when I said when I said With insult you, him. You decided, you know what? I'll, I'll incite. With humidity, we're at like 40 degrees outside. Yeah. I don't know what, anyways, next up. Moving on. Uh, uh, hold on. How about, how about your shoes? Tom's fashion statement: 40 bucks. <laughs> Tom's. They're in style. Yeah. I used to get my clothes from Tom's. <laughs> used to being the but key word. on right now. That, that <laughs> is, that is an ugly ones. woman shoe, let alone no. a man shoe. Uh, they grow on you. Okay, so back to Randy Moss, though. So, th how would he play in hockey? <laughs> That's the thing. I think with hockey, it's perceived as a different sport where it's more of an I don't want to say an old man's game, but there's tradition to it. I think more than anything, and. If a guy behaves like that, it's really frowned upon, like the mooning incident or whatever. He'd get beat up in hockey, though. He'd be put in his place. It's a different sport, so, uh, you know, Ocho Cinco, those guys, I don't know how they, like, you know, this guy's as close <laughs> as it comes to a guy like that. So they, they get put Because in you, you guys can't even for me, handle... For me, for me, it gets back to on the field, on the right, but you, If, they, if these... the guy's going to back it up... Right. Like, if you want to uh, chirp or say something, or that's fine, but if you can go out there and back it up... 
What's, what's someone going to say back? Right, but I, you guys can't even handle PK Subban in the National Hockey League. So, I mean, how are you going to handle Randy Moss? PK oh, his is, teammates can't. PK is, oh, PK's the greatest thing yeah. ever. You guys are just babies. PK and backs like, it up. He does. I agree. Try, I like try and beat him. Try and beat him. He's a very good player. Yeah. He's no one's debating whether he's a good player, but yeah. there's a lot of guys who go, you know, crossing the line. Yeah, I think it rubs guys the wrong way sometimes. I'm not saying him in, in particular, but just that kind of, that big personality. But I, I like what Randy Moss does. I think it's hilarious. Here's when it rubs guys the wrong way. When the, the guy doing it is good enough to back it up once again. Right. So Randy Moss, that's why it rubs people the wrong way. Because he does it, and then he goes okay. and backs it up. Give me your shoe, and we'll ask, going we'll, ask, we'll ask Tanev over there. What size are you? Are you about seven? <laughs> how, how big are these? Ten and a half. Okay, that's his shoe. That's, That's my, my desert boot. <laughs> Kenneth, what do you say? Definitely the Toms. What do you say, Vic? I Vic go Toms. Hold on, I let got... me say this before you say that. You don't have a contract right now. You're a, po <laughs> you're a power forward hey, come on. that I think the Canucks got to offer you a contract because uh, I know there's a lot of teams that would love to have you. Now, which shoe is, shoe is better? I, I guess I got to stick with you on this one now after that, after that little plug there. There you go. It's decided. <laughs> Although Thanks. I am wearing Toms. The man Tom. gets swayed very easily. Thanks. Swayed? Persuaded. Swayed. Thanks for doing this, guys.